Hello and welcome back to our webinar series, Finding Hope with OMS, the 10th anniversary season. Um, tonight we're going to be joined by Sam Josephs, uh, looking at OMS easy and family friendly foods. Um, my name's Sean Southward, for those of you that don't know me, and I'm joining you from the UK. Um, in a moment, I should be handing over to Sam. But before I do that, I just wanted to run through a bit of housekeeping to keep the webinar running as smoothly as possible for you all. Um, just a note to say that we are recording the session um, and you will receive an access um, to the link by email from Zoom following the session in a couple of days time. We'll also in that link um, take you back to where all the materials to support tonight. So the, the recipes and of course the presentation, the copy of the PowerPoint um, that Sam will be taking us through shortly. Uh, you'll notice that it, because it is a Zoom webinar, there isn't an audio or video function for our attendees. However, you can submit questions at the bottom on the Q&A button. If you are experiencing any technical glitches, then we recommend just popping out and popping back into the webinar and using a Chrome browser, which is the, the most effective. We have tried to make the session accessible. So there are subtitles at the bottom. You can turn that off by going into your settings at the bottom and hiding those. As you exit the webinar tonight, there will of course be our usual uh, pop-up survey. Um, if you have the time to, be, to fill that in, that would be great. That gives us the constructive feedback and shapes the webinars going forward. Um, we will be running for approximately an hour tonight. After uh, Sam's done her presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. Um, and so without further ado, I'm gonna welcome Sam onto the stage who has hot-footed it back from Glastonbury. So for those of you in the UK, she's um, hot-footed it back from the festival to join us tonight and uh, to her presentation. So welcome to the stage, Sam. You're on mute. Sorry, Sam. So there you go. Just to highlight the fact that I'm not as well rested as I might be if I hadn't have been sleeping in a tent all weekend, <laughs> shouting over loud music, losing my voice. Um, but thank you to everybody for joining me this evening and for those of you watching on record. Um, if you don't know me, my, Sam, my name is Sam and I am a, a registered nutritional therapist. I qualified back in 2008. Uh, my husband, Danny, was diagnosed with MS 20 years ago now. Um, and we have two kids who are a bit more grown up now. Um, but they're still living at home and uh, we they've pretty much been following the OMS program fully at home for a good number of years now. Um, and so I want to share with you some of my family friendly tips and tricks for living uh, with the OMS program. Oops. Um, so in terms of move. OK, here we go. So just to recap. Um, the sort of basic uh, food guidelines for the OMS program is to be dairy free 100% of the time, to be predominantly plant focused, so a diet that's very rich in plant foods, but maybe not exclusively because we can include fish and seafood as well, but also to have a lot of whole foods in the diet, so avoiding some of the highly processed foods. Um, and if you're eating seafood fish, then trying to get a portion of oily fish three times a week. So that's the sardines, mackerel, herring, anchovies, um, and salmon as well. And if you follow a diet like this at home, then chances are most of the meals that you, your kids will be eating will be super healthy because the OMS food guidelines are very similar to the general healthy eating guidelines, which is to eat less meat, to eat more fish, more plants, to stay away from the highly processed foods. And this uh, benefit of healthy eating, like the OMS program, is good for all of us, not just those of us 
um, who have chronic diseases, but for the entire population, which is slowly getting more and more unhealthy. So eating well and healthy and encouraging the, your kids and your family to eat well can reduce heart health. It can reduce cancer risk improve your mood and your mental health, as well as improving your gut health, things like bloating and constipation. It's also been demonstrated to improve memory and cognition, contribute to weight loss if you're overweight, as well as reducing risk of diabetes and improving your bone health uh, as you age, improving your teeth health as well, cutting down on sugars. Um, as well as helping you to sleep better. And if you are of a fertile age and you're planning a family, male or female, a healthy diet will improve the health of the next generation of your offspring as well. And this study that I've highlighted was a Swiss study done a few years ago, uh, just a couple of years ago now, or four years ago, um, looking at uh, the effects that it has on children where they eat and who they eat with. And they, what they found was examining um, and modifying for various different variable factors, um, a group of children consuming about 10,000 meals between them over the course of a week. Um, those children that had more family meals uh, were eating more vegetables, eating more fruits and drinking less soft drinks, so consuming less sugar. So eating together healthily, all of you, the same meal is not just easier for uh, managing MS and the barriers that you may have to cooking with MS, but it's also much better for your children's health as well. And it's important to remember that prevention in family members, be it siblings or children, um, nieces, nephews, will be reduced um, by eating healthily and is a really key part of the OMS program as well. Um, and this quote really resonated with me and I wanted to share it with you because it's, it's actually quite deep. It's taken from a book called First Bite by a lady called B. Wilson. Um, and it's this Dr. Keith Williams from the Children's Hospital Feeding Process Program who said, while it should be the case that children eat what their parents serve, our clinical experience tells us that parents serve what their children eat. And I know back in the 70s, my mum only made one meal. It was take it or leave it. We all ate the same meal. And when you've got MS, it's very difficult to cook different meals for different people in the family. And quite often we are tricked into thinking that our kids want this highly processed kind of cartoon looking food because that's what the television tells us. That's what the advertising um, and the big food stores tell us. It's not actually true and it doesn't need to be that way. Children should eat what we put on the table, which should be healthful and nourishing. And it's not the, I'm blaming, shaming any of us, absolutely not. Uh, really, it's the food industry that's highly to blame. Um, but there are barriers when you have MS. It could be fatigue. It could be your mobility or even dexterity, carrying heavy pans of boiling water to the sink. It could be budget. It could be fussy uh, fussy kids or other people living in the household with you, your partner who might be very fussy, or it could just be your confidence um, in terms of uh, how to cook a meal from scratch. So I thought it would be good to do a little poll at this point. And I think Sean is going to take control of this because I haven't done it before. Thank you, Sean. So you can tick here more than one, but I thought it would be really interesting. Um, uh, to see which one out of these uh, factors are sometimes the ones that hold you back. So if you want to just take a moment to fill that in. I know for some of my clients, cognitive issues can be um, a problem, uh, deciding meal planning, meal planning for the family, and then having to meal plan on top of that a separate OMS friendly meal 
can sometimes be a barrier. So those cognitive issues can come into play as well. Okay, so I'm not sure where we go to get the results because I can't see anything on my screen. Aha, uh -huh. so the results are in so far and more than half of you struggling with fatigue. Um, and that's where batch cooking um, and designated cooking days can really come in to help as well. But obviously lots of things being ticked there. Pleased to see no one's ticked all of the above. So it's just some of these factors. Um, confidence scoring quite high, 30%, as well as um, people receiving the meal in the kitchen, the fussy kids um, and other family members. Okay, right, so I'm going to move on and hopefully we'll address some of those issues. Um, so when you're planning a meal plate, it's really important to get the main food groups represented. So these are what we call the macronutrients. They're large nutrients that we consume for energy. This is carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. It also includes fiber and water as well. And your dinner plate should really be composed of these three things. And even when you're planning a snack, it's a good idea to try and contain some of all of these macronutrients. The micronutrients are what we need in much smaller quantities, but are still really, really important when planning a meal. And when you get all three macronutrients together on the plate, chances are you're scoring really high on your micronutrients, the vitamins, minerals, and the antioxidants. So we talk about OMS as being a low fat diet. It's not a fat free diet because the vitamins A, D, E and K are all fat soluble and are found in those foods that contain good fats like nuts and seeds and their oils and avocado. Um, but also it's important to remember if you're taking a vitamin D supplement to take it along with a meal that contains some fat because that will help you to absorb the vitamin D orally. And one of the things um, on here, one of the things on the list, the antioxidants is particularly important for people with MS because this helps protect the body cells from degeneration. And some of the vitamins and minerals like vitamin C or zinc can act as an antioxidant. But the other antioxidants that we get from our diet are those that we get from colorful plants fruits and vegetables. So the more the variety, and especially the greater the variety of um, color in the diet, uh, the greater the quantity of different antioxidants that all do slightly different jobs and have a much more potent effect throughout the body. So your kids will have heard the phrase, eat a rainbow. So this is something you can really encourage them to do at home as well, to try a bit of purple cabbage, to try the purple grapes over the green grapes, to have a go with some of the orange peppers um, or the orange squashes or fruits, um, and especially enjoy the dark green leafy vegetables as well. So this is a handout and I can pass it on to Sean for you, but it's, it's a handout that's been put together by BANT, which is the governing body um, that is a nutritionist. I um, conform to their standards um, of evidence-based lifestyle and nutrition medicine. So they're the British Association of Nutrition and Lifestyle Medicine. And this is the handout that we give everybody, not people on a specific diet or a specifically tailored um, program like the OMS diet. But what I put on here, I just thought it was interesting to see how many of these tips um, for the general population tally in really well with the OMS program. So if this is the dinner plate that we should be feeding all of our families, just look how easy it is to achieve it when we're following the OMS program. We've got the fruits and vegetables, we've got none of the rubbishy fats like the trans fats from processed cooking, uh, processed foods and high, um, 
high temperature cooking. We've got lots of plant-based foods, the root vegetables, grains, beans, pulses. We've got nuts and seeds, all the healthy fats. And it also encourages us as well to exercise and to sleep well in order to manage stress. So this is just a reminder of how the OMS program really does tie in with the idea of healthy eating for everyone. So on to some recipe ideas and tips. And I'm not a chef, but I do enjoy cooking. I cook a lot. We cook all our meals from scratch. I've got my son downstairs right now. He's hard at work making dinner, which he's just shown me as a gorgeous salad, which he's put lots of seeds into, as well as some strawberries. I'm quite impressed. Um, but one of the things that I do at least once a week um, is to do a fish parcel because it's so easy. It's kind of one meal that you can do on repeat, but with just slightly changing it up, you can make one dish really different from one week to the next, which not only keeps the family entertained and their taste buds excited, um, but it also means that you're bringing variety into their diet as well. So you just need to make a parcel, whether it's aluminium foil or baking parchment, and you can do something like a whole sea bass for the family, or you could just do a fillet of cod or something like a salmon steak or a hake steak, something like that. And then just put in some flavor. Any old herbs will do, or a combination of herbs can work really well. Um, you could even add some spices to that, or if you haven't got fresh herbs, dried herbs, dried spices, and then throw in a few toppings as well that will help provide a bit of juice for the fish. So we don't need to necessarily add any oils to that. It could be a squeeze of lemon juice. It could be something like grapefruit slices that work particularly well with mackerel. It could be orange slices. It could be... Um, it could be just a spoonful of chopped tomatoes. It could be chopped up cherry tomatoes. It could be um, some pitted olives or some capers work well. Even just a dollop um, of sweet chili sauce and coriander can be a great um, kind of Asian sort of infused flavor. Um, even some chili flakes on there. Um, so that's a really quick and easy idea. And I love doing that once a week and I will just do that. I can do that with some steamed new potatoes, which I'll drizzle on some olive oil with a little crack of salt, um, maybe some dill or some other fresh herbs um, or a bit of garlic or something like rice and then um, some lots of steamed vegetables and a salad as well. I'm a big fan of doing the double veg. So a little bit of raw and then maybe some steamed greens um, on the side as well. And then this one is even easier because it's slightly more impressive if you're having people over. This is um, a photo of a dish I did um, a few weeks ago uh, for family who came over. It was just a side of salmon with some chopped up leeks. I've got cherry tomatoes in there, tarragon, some lemon slices um, and a rinse jar of pitted olives. And then I just um, drizzled some martini over it, uh, which is my kind of secret go to. Um, cooks really well, don't need to add oil, it just provides the right moisture. The alcohol burns off as it's cooking, so it's totally child friendly, but it leaves a delicious sweetness behind. Um, but you could also do it with stock. You could do it with a mixture of soy sauce and stock and use um, some uh, more kind of Asian herbs um, like chopped lemongrass um, or some um, coriander or something. Again, you could do it with um, a tin of tomatoes and you could do some chopped aubergines, onions and courgettes and make like a ratatouille kind of style base with a piece of white fish on top. It could be um, pieces of cod or haddock or hake or um, uh, some kingfish or something could go on the top of there as well. And another easy kind of way to think about it if you want to keep the cost down is just put some smaller pieces of fish in and add a ting and chickpeas, chickpeas 
or a tin of borlotti beans or cannellini beans and then everyone gets like roasted vegetables with some beans and a small piece of fish and again I love it because it's just one tray really easy for washing up I put on a pan of rice I put my steamer above the rice I've got all the delicious vegetables from the tray bake and then I'll put some shredded greens maybe some pak choy maybe some shredded savoy cabbage or green cabbage uh, or even red cabbage in there something like broccoli or some spinach um, spring greens collard greens work really well just in a steamer on top of the rice and dinner's done, two pans and a baking tray. Um, when it comes to cooking beans and lentils, this is something that I found a lot of my clients um, have struggle with is moving over to having beans and lentils as frequently as the OMS diet. And it's a good idea to try and include a portion every day. Um, an easy way to think about it is something like a stew or a curry with a bean base, which could either be kind of stock based or it could be tin tomato based or it could be something like um, soy yogurt sort of mixed with a bit of tomato paste or something to be something a bit creamier. And then depending on the way you spice it and flavor it and tweak some of the vegetables, it becomes a completely different dish. It could be a Middle Eastern tagine style dish when you use squashes and raisins and a few flaked almonds with chickpeas and serve with couscous. It could be something more Indian flavors when you add the Indian cumin and cori um, ground coriander and turmeric, all these spices, super, super potent antioxidant. We all know that turmeric is a great anti-inflammatory, but all these spices have really valuable anti-inflammatory antioxidant properties. Um, the um, Mexican uh, flavor is really easy to do with something like a chipotle paste, which you can stir into the um, uh, chopped tomatoes and the beans once they are simmering away nicely. Um, these dishes work really well, served again, just with rice or couscous um, or even quinoa. And you could have the same dish and serve it with rice uh, one day, batch freeze it, bring it out next week, but serve it with quinoa with some shredded parsley in it or some lemon zest in it the next week. And so these foods work well for batch cooking as well. And one of the things I've done before, sorry, going back to the the fish parcels is you can wrap them up flavored and raw and bung them back in the freezer and then just defrost and bake. So that's another good time saving way for those of you struggling with fatigue. But again, quite low washing up with this. Um, bring the kids in, get them to help you to chop things um, or sprinkle in um, uh, spices and things like that. Um, that can also be another help. But don't be shy to delegate chores to some of the younger kids and bring them into the process because the smells and the excitement and the adventure of cooking the dish will help as well um, with your fatigue, but it will also um, help the kids be more likely to try things rather than picking out certain bits. Um, when I do a more traditional kind of um, bean hot pot, I will serve it with something like um, mashed potato, but sometimes I won't use white potatoes. I'll use sweet potatoes or I'll use a mix of white potato and swede or some parsnip, carrot and sweet potato mixed together. So just getting the kids to help peel and chop and getting them in the pan. Um, the plant-based substitutes, so there are some good ones out there that you can buy straight off the shelves, but a lot of them contain um, a, a long list of ingredients and they're fine to use as long as the saturated fat levels are down and they don't have any of the, the sort of the cheaper oils in them, the palm oil and stuff. Um, so do check the labels. Um, but they are pretty easy to make yourself. You've just got to find a good recipe and then 
um, kind of tweak it a bit and there will be recipes that are coming out with this. So essentially all you're doing is rinsing um, a can of beans, um, adding some dried oats or some leftover cooked rice from the day before or a chunk of bread which you can toast um, or if it's maybe a bit stale and blitz it up into breadcrumbs and add that, maybe an, um, an egg white and then just put loads of herbs and seasonings and flavors in it. And if you just zhuzh it all up together in, in a blender, then it will make some really nice patties, which again, once they're made, you can turn them into patties and then you can freeze them. Um, or they go straight, I put them on a baking sheet, I spray them with a small amount of um, olive oil and I put them in the oven um, and just bake them. And it works really, really well. Um, tofu works really well, just crumbled up firm tofu together with something like ketchup or sriracha um, or even a sweet chili sauce or soy sauce um, mushed all together kind of holds its own. Um, and they make, this is the picture, these are the tofu burgers that I made a few weeks ago. Um, and they're really, really delicious. They're very low in saturated fat and they're super easy and quick. And again, great for summer season. They go in a bun um, and you could just have them with a nice big salad and lots of steamed veggies on the side. Um, you can change the flavors. So for example, um, I think this was the tofu sriracha burger, but you could make it with something like sun-dried tomatoes chopped up and some fresh basil chopped up or dried basil. And they would have a more kind of Mediterranean kind of flavor if you prefer that sort of thing. So it's just about tweaking the flavorings with a similar basic start. Um, and when I cook, the whole grains, um, I always double cook. I will double cook rice, pasta, quinoa, couscous, whatever it is I'm making. And I will have some with the evening meal, with the fish tray bake perhaps, but then I'll have a big bowl left um, in the fridge overnight. And I will put, um, uh, and I will put, mix it with different herbs and different um, kind of chopped up vegetables to turn it into a salad which can make a nice side on the plate the following night but a bit different to what you had the previous night or you can flake in some tin tuna or some tin salmon or you can add some chickpeas or lentils um, and turn it into a whole meal something that works really well for pack lunches or even something for picnics um, leftover roast veg, for example, a tray of roast veg, a sprinkle on water, spray on a bit of olive oil, make a big tray. We have half for dinner and then the next half gets mixed together with some couscous and some herbs. And then, you know, you can just add some chickpeas to that and that's dinner the following day. Um, so really kind of trying. So it, it does pay to kind of plan um, the plate and the meals so that leftovers can be zhuzhed up into something a bit more spangly the next day. This picture, I think I've got a recipe for this that I'll share with you. I often do this at barbecues. It's a really delicious brown rice salad. Um, it's the Mediterranean one with fresh basil, olives, capers, sun-dried tomatoes. Um, and then sometimes we have that as a side dish, but I'll make enough that we have leftover and then I flake in a tin of tuna the following day and that's lunch. Um, so some hopefully easy ideas. And similarly dips, so dips are a great thing to have in the fridge for things like sandwich spreads, um, for things like picnics, but also when the kids get home from school, you know, rather than um, Kit Kats and crisps and things, maybe they could just grab a carrot um, and stick it into a nice dip that's in the fridge. And it's essentially just using a dollop of soy yogurt, either blended up with a tin of fish or some smoked mackerel works really well, which is the one I do a lot here, um, or a tin of beans, um, and blitz it all up together with a handheld mixer and presto, it's a dip. Um, you could do beans, you could do fish, or you could do a combination of fish and beans. 
So talking about when they come home from school, this is a picture of when I cooked the um, chickpeas from the OMS um, uh, website. There's a lovely recipe for baked chickpeas. So they're deliciously coated in these yummy spices um, and they have a nice crisp, crunchy texture. Um, but easy to grab things, you know, a bowl of fresh fruit, um, picking the kids up from school, maybe with, you know, trail mix, something like dried mango and a few cashews. Um, olives make a great snack, particularly paired with um, a few nuts talking about vegetable crudités and some of these dips, or maybe just picking the kids up with a smoothie, just fruit and yogurt blended together, um, the soy yogurt, um, you know, even soy milk, if they're fussy about it, they won't know when it's blended up with delicious berries and sweetened in that way. Um, something like um, the nutty biscuits. So I'm thinking specifically of warming a little bit of honey in a pan, sprinkling in a combination of seeds, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, and then pouring it out onto a baking sheet to kind of make a peanut brittle, but like a seedy brittle. That's one of our favorite snacks um, and works really well as an after school snack for kids or something sweet when you're kind of searching the pantry. So we are in full summer and July is the OMS big picnic month. So hopefully lots of you are planning some great fundraising for the July picnic. I hope that there's been some ideas here for some um, sandwiches, uh, sandwiches, wraps, even burritos, you know, making something like a soy tzatziki. So just yogurt, grated cucumber, squeeze out the juice, a bit of fresh mint, little dash of garlic into a wrap and load it up with vegetables. Really great um, to take on a picnic or using some of those uh, mackerel pate ideas. Savory muffins work well, something that's made with courgette um, or butternut squash. And the OMS website is a great place for those sorts of recipes, particularly um, there's a lovely recipe in the OMS cookbook, I think, with um, chickpea, using chickpea flour to make a delicious pie crust. Um, so taking pies and savory tarts um, on the picnic or even something like a leftover kedgeree from dinner the night before or one of these whole grain salads that I was talking about, um, leftover um, grilled salmon or the ready bought kind of prawn skewers, calamari rings, not the ones that are battered and deep fried, but the kind of the raw calamari rings, something like a gumbo or a paella that you may have cooked earlier in the week, um, essentially just a seafood spice, spicy rice mix works really well, eaten cold as well. Um, that's a great meal on a picnic, along with some fruit and some other crudités and snacks. Um, so taking dips with you as well. Um, and thankfully, the, warm is, the weather is warm enough in the UK now that we are into barbecue season and we're coming up to American Independence Day, July the 4th. Um, and it's really easy to get to grips with the barbecue without having to use oil. Um, a friend of mine shared with me this fail safe barbecue sauce. It's just five ingredients. It doesn't matter if it's a tablespoon or a cup, but balsamic vinegar, Worcester sauce, ketchup, honey and soy sauce or gluten free soy sauce. Those five ingredients in equal proportions mixed all together makes killer barbecue sauce that you can brush onto salmon, you could brush it onto portobello mushrooms and grill them for burgers. Um, delicious on vegetable kebab sticks as well. Or even a salsa verde works really well with both fish and vegetables. And remember, a barbecue is a lot about the trimmings and what goes on, um, not just on the grill. When we're not putting big sort of slabs of steak and um, burgers and things, but maybe grilling the vegetables and then using them to make um, a nice salad with a delicious um, dressing rather than marinating them beforehand when they get a bit wet and soggy and fall in the coals. Grill them, marinate them in the dressing afterwards. Fish and seafood work really well on the barbecue. Um, sometimes you might need to use a grill mat, which can stop them falling through um, the actual grill onto the coals. 
Um, but don't forget that the salads in the background, you know, the potato salads, the coleslaws, the green leafy salads, these delicious whole grain salads work really, really well um, around the barbecue. And so once it's fired up, you could maybe put some fish on it if you're eating fish or seafood. Um, what I did last week, we had our first barbecue and I put whole aubergines on the grill and let all the skin blister and the aubergine collapse. And then I scraped it all out, mashed it with a dollop of tahini um, and a bit of garlic paste and some parsley. And we had that as a dip with some pita bread while we were waiting for the rest of the food to cook on the barbie. Um, so it's a really nice, um, be inventive. With the, with the veggies that you can put on, not just you know, for the main event, but also for making things like dips and side salads, skewers of vegetables, roasted on the barbecue being the side dish as well um, in a delicious dressing, maybe a honey mustard dressing works well. Um, those plant-based alternatives that we talked about, just be careful to use maybe a grill mesh, um, um, and sometimes you can get those kind of extra grill um, kind of, uh, what are they called? Like a sort of a casing that you put the fish in so that you can flip it without losing the fish through the slats of the grill. Um, and don't forget as the coil, as the coals are dying down, fruit works really well on a barbecue and it blows people's mind. I did a chili and lime watermelon chunks on skewers on the barbecue, which we had with the aubergine actually as starters. Um, it was a bit Marmite, half of us loved it, half of us less so. Um, I loved it. Um, but something like pineapple brushed with a rum syrup, um, just sugar, water, a few spices like all oil, all spice um, or ginger or something brushed onto the pineapple is delicious. Um, people used to put Mars bars in bananas in foil and put them on the barbecue. Well, you can recreate that by mixing a little bit of cocoa powder into some almond butter, slicing open a banana and shoving a few dollops in there, wrapping it in foil and putting it on the barbecue. So lots of delicious ways to enjoy the barbecue without oil. Um, and so before I finish, I just want to kind of re-emphasize the point of, um, of, of bringing everybody around us into this more healthy way of living and cooking, particularly those people that are gonna be eating with us on a daily basis, because there is something called the 80-20 rule for the general population. If 80% of the time you're eating really well, then you can have that 20% kind of falling off the wagon, go for your crisps and Mars bars. I'm talking about the kids rather than um, us. Um, but if we make those changes and we set them in stone at home in the family, as they grow up, they take them on to be the normal and they will come back to it um, when kids grow up and live alone um, and go off to college or um, getting first jobs. So switching things like white bread to brown, trying to switch um, white rice to brown or whole grain cereals, switching out. Um, from something like uh, Frosties every day, maybe having porridge once a week or a nice muesli once a week, just changing the routine, maybe not every day for the kids, you know, whatever makes them happy, but slowly, slowly um, switching out the juices and the soft drinks, uh, making sure that we get lots of good oils into them as well. So my son, he's 22 and he thinks that he's never eaten flaxseed oil in his life because he hates it. It's not true. Every time I make pasta, I'm pouring flaxseed oil on the pasta before I put my sauces on top and he hasn't got a clue. So he's been consuming flaxseed, but he's not watching. So that's fine. Um, 
adding the extra stuff. So where you might be inclined to make something like a piece of fish, some rice and some steamed broccoli, can you add an extra portion of broccoli? Can you put something else in the steamer as well? Maybe some cauliflower, maybe something that takes just as long to cook as the broccoli, something like some shredded kale or some shredded cabbage, could be red, white cabbage, green cabbage. Um, or some a simple salad, something like watercress, celery and cherry tomatoes, um, or something like um, rocket and sunflower seeds um, with some cucumber. So we're getting a different variety um, onto our children's plates and onto our plates every day. Um, the one of the things the Turkish um, tradition is, is they cook when they cook their rice, they quite often add chickpeas. And this is something that can make rice more interesting. Just putting a half a can of chickpeas in at the end of cooking. Um, they're easy enough for the kids to pick out, but the more they get used to seeing it on the plate, the more inclined they'll be to try it. Um, judging up the cereal by increasing the nutritional benefit by adding things like um, nuts and seeds, even if it's something like frosties or crunchy nut cornflakes. And um, Meat Free Monday is something that the kids will be talking about at school and be aware of. So maybe carrying that on at home if they are reluctant. Um, and when it comes to fatigue, um, it's about kind of batch making as well and being able to freeze things and maybe setting aside um, a small window on a Sunday when everybody's together to maybe talk about who's in, who's out, some of the meals we can do um, and how you can change it up to have a chickpea curry that's got a few chunks of chicken in it for the family and you'll take those out for yourself and you'll enjoy the chickpea curry as it is with the vegetables. But I'm going to stop there um, because I feel like we want to take some um, some questions from all of you. Um, so I'm going to hand back to Sean, I think. Sean? Hi, Sam. Hi. Um, I'm kind of, I'm aware that I'm rushing, but I want to get in some questions and so anything that anybody else wants to share with the community that they think would be really helpful. And we can hear from other people too. Okay. We've, um, thank you so much for that. Um, and I've obviously put, on, in answer to a couple of questions just about our pace that the all the materials will be made available to people so people can look back and play the recording back um, as much as they want to so just to respond to that but we have had a few questions posted before uh, the session and a couple tonight and hopefully there'll be more coming through so yeah um one of the questions we had before Sam was around um Somebody's asked, is it okay to eat the fish from the fish and chip shop? Um, obviously, they put not the chips, obviously, but if you scrape the batter off the fish, is it still bad for you? Um, really good question. Really good question. Um, I would say yes. And it's really interesting because there was a little bit of a Twitter storm around such a question um, a few years ago, Grace Dent, um, the food critic, had written something about it on her Twitter feed. Um, I think it was an Aussie had posted something like along those lines. He doesn't eat the batter. He peels it back and he enjoys the fish inside. And she was kind of horrified, but kind of really impressed at the same time, because essentially all that's happening is the batter is protecting the fish as it cooks at very high temperatures in very hot oil. So actually cutting it open, peeling off the batter and eating the white fish inside is absolutely fine. It has been cooked at a high temperature, but because it's a white fish, it's less rich in those um, unstable oils. Um, and then the proteins and everything are all still intact and the oil has been locked in to the batter. So it's a really good way around um, the fast food question. Um, so yes, absolutely, bring it home and have it with some peas and some salad 
um, and just obviously avoid the chips. But yes, definitely, I would say it's okay to do that. Great, that's great news for whoever asked that question. Yeah. So uh, just following on from tonight, and obviously we've touched on barbecues, somebody on the, um, the Q&A section has asked, are barbecues really okay? I read something about the burnt black bits. I've always got burnt bits on my barbecue, but that's a different story. Um, are they really bad for you? Well, the reason the burnt black bits are bad for you is because they are um, burnt and they can be, they are considered carcinogenic. Um, what's um, important to remember is when we're cooking, so you, the idea is that you cook all the fire away and you end up cooking on the, um, the coals as they start to turn white. And because we're not cooking meat, things cook very quickly. So actually that window of heat is a lot less. And with things like the vegetables, they go on and they start to kind of cook. They cook pretty quickly without a marinade or any oil there. You're not igniting the flames again. What happens when you cook a meaty barbecue is the fat drips from the meat and it reignites and then it burns. And that's when you get that burnt thing happening. So with fish and vegetables, it happens a lot more often. I'd say be careful, you know, when you're brushing things on. That's why it's good to kind of get one of those silicon brushes or something so that it doesn't drip through too much. But essentially what we're brushing on would be mostly oil free, so it would be fine. Um, so, yeah, just avoid the burnt black bits. But it's unlikely the vegetables burn too much. They, they cook really quickly. So as soon as they start to shrivel and collapse, uh. they have the barbecue. Um, and in the UK, if we're not eating them that often, which we might be this summer, because so far so good, um, then a little bit rarely isn't going to do that much because of all the antioxidants that exactly do the opposite of what the burnt bits do. The antioxidants will undo any damage. So if you've got a bright, colourful salad, a bright, colourful coleslaw um, alongside your barbecue um, uh -huh. they has nothing to worry about great thank you um somebody's asked how do you stop paella becoming too sticky and clumping together keep it keep, keep lifting underneath keep lifting underneath um yeah i think but really if it 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 doesn't matter if it's bit too sticky because paella is made with a certain type of rice that is more starchy um yeah or just avoid the very base bit let's scrape that bit out and leave that bit in the pan for washing off but it should yeah it should work i love those like burnt sticky bits <laughs> on the crunchy bits yeah <laughs> um so another question, Sam, what are your thoughts on using microwaves, particularly reheating food initially cooked with extra virgin olive oil in an oven under 180 degrees? Um, I think that's absolutely fine. And I think microwaves are an absolute um, godsend and time saver for people who suffer with fatigue issues. Um, absolutely. So the way microwaves work is they target the water molecules in food substances. So they don't directly heat the oil itself. They will heat the food around, they will heat the container and indirectly heat um, the fat and the oil that's in that food. So if you've got um, something that's been cooked in EVOO, so extra virgin olive oil, then um, reheating it in a microwave is absolutely fine. Obviously, pay attention to the temperature. You don't want to overheat something, but essentially, yes, completely fine um, and a real godsend in terms of washing up and heating up. I'd say try and stay away from plastics and heat in glass and ceramic if you can um, as well. Great. 
Um, and actually, you've answered one of the other questions just in that about what does EVOO stand for? And I have to say that when I saw one of the questions come up before, I was like, what's that? So, yes, extra virgin olive oil. Yeah. Um, hope that clears everything up for people. Um, uh, a lady um, today, if I water, saute, saute a tofu stir fry and add extra virgin olive oil afterwards can I reheat those leftovers with the oil in the microwave absolutely yes for the yeah. reasons we've just said so I haven't got a microwave but I'm pretty sure you can set temperatures and I would say as long as the oil is combined and it's in there and it's part of the food and you're setting it for no hotter than about 20 it will be sorry 200 it will be absolutely fine because it's not the oil itself that's being targeted by the microwave. It'll be the water molecules within the vegetables um, and any of the soy sauce, sweet chili sauce, anything else that you've used alongside that. Um, there's a question here. Is chicken breast that bad for MS patients or does it need to go? Um, so from a saturated fat perspective, um, it's not that bad. And that's why a lot of people are like, hmm, well, I'm not sure. But so the thing about meat um, is that when they've done like wide population studies, and if anybody's read the China study, which was looking at the Chinese population, the largest um, single population, um, what they found was that people who are uh, meat eaters, and that includes chicken, tend to suffer more with chronic illness, chronic diseases, and don't live as long as people without meat in the diet. Um, and one of the reasons for this is because um, the fat that it is in meat, one of the fats in meat, chicken included, is arachidonic acid. And yes, there are much lower amounts in a chicken breast. Um, and arachidonic acid is pro-inflammatory. So it's an inflammation driven mechanism that we uh -huh. suggest not eating it. Um, but I think if you are somebody who maybe doesn't eat a lot of fish, um, that using um, small amounts of ch white chicken breast, skinless chicken breast, maybe uh, sort of thin slices at a stir fry or small chunks in a curry occasionally with a few beans and pulses and, and other foods as well. Um, I think from a saturated fat perspective are fine. And if you start in this way, then perhaps enjoying those foods more and more, you might find that eventually you can start to reduce the chicken quantity as well. And I know that lots of people on the OMS program um, start that way and progress um, in other ways. Um, if you know you're allowing yourself to have it, you're allowed to have it, then you miss it less and you actually will find that you might eat it less than you thought you did as well. So, Okay, thank you. Um, we, you talked about fish just then. Somebody's asked about um, tin fish and has there been some bad press about that recently? Um, no, I'm, I haven't. Uh, maybe I've been... Um, yeah, lost at Glastonbury, but I hadn't noticed something in, um, recently. Um, but tinned fish is absolutely fine shortcut to use as far as I'm aware. Um, I think the issue would probably be around um, aluminium within the tins and that kind of thing. Um, the point to remember about tinned fish is that tuna in the canning process loses all of its um, good fats it becomes reasonably low fat low in all fats uh -huh. so it's still a useful protein based food um, but when you have fresh tuna from the fishmongers or from the supermarket that contains um, good fats in it but apart from that the canning process um, I think is a great way to get sardines into the diet mackerel into the diet things like pilchards anchovies um, perhaps if it's had some bad press from the actual canning process, then maybe not relying on it as your only source of fish. Uh -huh. um, again, 
it brings us back to the idea of variety and lots of fish from different sources and different means. Uh, there's a really good question here and certainly something that I struggle with. I'm sure my, a lot of people do. Um, do you have any tips for minimising food wastage? Uh, this lady says that if she buys lots of different fruit and veg, like fresh fruit and veg, yeah, um, yeah. to get that variety in her diet, it goes off before she gets around to eating it. So any sort of top tips with yeah. that? Smoothies and soups are the obvious one. Anything that's kind of looking a bit sort of past it with the veggies can just get thrown into a pan with some stock and you'll find that you invent some really delicious combinations of different soups. Um, fruits can just get thrown into a smoothie. And of course, once they've been prepared like that, you can freeze them. So you can have a frozen smoothie, you can have, or you can just blitz the fruit and then freeze it. But you can also freeze fruit. So you can freeze strawberries, you can freeze bananas, um, you can chop them up, put them in a Ziploc bag and freeze them. Um, another thing that you could try doing with them um, is I've bought a dehydrator. It wasn't very expensive on Amazon. Um, and, and I just realized that, yes, I get to a certain point where I'm thinking, oh, what am I going to do with these leftover bits? And I thought, oh, I can dehydrate them and we'll try a dehydrated tomato. <laughs> um, mm. But also even just a very low light, you put it on in the oven overnight and that has a very similar effect to dehydrating. You'd have to look up instructions online. But those are the sorts of things that you can do with the leftover fruit and veg. Um, yeah, not to go to waste. I've seen a really good hack, actually, where you can put like a, a strawberry or a couple of blueberries in just an ice tray. Yeah. Um, fill it up with water. And then it's just a really nice sort of addition to just drinking a, a, a water. Yeah. yeah. And the same with vegetables. If you just want something that's small to throw in, like some coriander or whatever, you know, as a herb, yeah, and put it in an ice cube, freeze it, and then you've got ready-made sort of little additions. Yeah, and also if you just make a load of vegetables and turn it into a stock, like rather than a soup, um, a bit more kind of concentrated with the liquid. Again, the ice cube trick. You've then got homemade stock that you can pour into ice cubes, which you can just add to any sort of stews or curries that you make later in the week. Um, what's your opinion on air fryers? Um, I have one. It's very old. I love it. I think it's great. I make brilliant chips in it. Um, I just use um, unpeeled white potatoes. Um, and I had a little gadget that you put the potato in and smash it down and it um, kind of dices it into long pieces. Um, and I put them in the air fryer and when they come out the air fryer, I spritz them with olive oil um, and a little bit of salt and they are great. I do it with a lot of root vegetables, but it's one of those air fryers that turns. Mm -hmm. Birthday coming up and I've asked for an air fryer, one that I can have with drawers. So yeah, I have, um, I think they're a great way of cooking. Um, and I know they say, you know, add a tablespoon of oil or something, but I found that it makes absolutely no difference whether I do or I don't. So I know some people were worried that some of the air fryers get quite hot and you've only got one tablespoon of oil in there, but is it getting too hot? Um, so I had to try without the oil, but um, I would think it would be absolutely fine. Just one tablespoon of oil, if that's what was needed, or even better, just a little spritzer. Um, I've bought a spritzer on Amazon and filled it with olive oil, and I've got another one filled with flaxseed oil in the fridge. And we use those on toast um, instead of butter. I think we've got time for probably one more question, Sam. Um, yeah. Lady Amanda said, I can't take calcium supplements as they upset me. So where do you get calcium from? First, you said 100% dairy free. Yet yeah. uh, the diet, OMS diet says matchbox size of dairy. What's the guidance? Yeah, so um, really um, interesting and it always catches people out. 
Um, dark green leafy vegetables are a very rich source of calcium. Dark green uh, leafy vegetables, beans and lentils, nuts and seeds, all of these plant-based foods contain calcium. And there was an interesting study done um, some years ago where they looked um, or they compared the absorption of calcium from dairy and calcium from greens. I think specifically they were looking at kale and the kale calcium is much more absorbable than the dairy calcium. And that's because um, to absorb calcium, we need to have good levels of the other vitamin, uh, the other minerals as well. We need to have our vitamin D, which because we're on the OMS program, we're all taking plenty of. So we will absorb plenty from the foods that we're eating. And then if we're eating plenty of dark greens that also contain the other minerals like zinc, and magnesium that go along with calcium and aid their absorption and aid their assimilation into the bones and teeth. Um, there are many, many um, communities around the world that don't eat dairy. Um, and when they've looked at rates of osteoporosis, which is um, brittle bones, which happens later in life with people who haven't had enough calcium or vitamin D to get strong enough bones in their youth, there is no evidence of osteoarthritis in older generations of those dairy-free commun dairy communities because they are um, eating so many of the calcium rich plant-based foods. Dried figs, for example, very good source um, of calcium. So adding them to breakfast cereals, chopped dried figs is another good way to get calcium, but lots of, so we really should be having at least one portion of leafy greens a day, if not to lunchtime and dinner, if not breakfast. I never knew that about figs actually. Yeah. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for tonight. I think that we've had lots of questions come through, which is great. And some really lovely feedback, actually. Somebody saying that, well, Nikki, who I know, is saying that it's great they've got their mojo back and it's easy to get stuck in a bit of a rut. And um, it's reminded her of how to be a bit more creative. So I, I just wanted to say thank you, Sam, for a great session and appreciate, obviously, you um, hot trotting back to thank us. You. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm off to watch it on my sofa now <laughs> watch the bits I missed <laughs> um, so you're welcome to stay with me while I just do the closing um, obviously again to say thank you thanks to everybody that's joined us tonight um, there has been some questions around the slides we will of course be making those available and you will also get the recording the email will come out um, from Zoom automatically um, in the next couple of days, which will link you back to the website. So everything's on there. Um, on that note, we will be back next month um, in um, on the 12th of July with our webinar season, where we've got a live cook along with Rachel Detroit. Um, you don't have to cook along live. You can just sit and watch and, you know, get the recipe and the ingredients and do it in your own time. Uh, but you are, of course, welcome to join Rachel live and, and, and do it with her. Uh, and then on the 13th of July, so we've got two back to back. Um, we've got a session on breath work with Veronique. They're all on the website. You can register now. Um, and then we will be taking um, a well-earned break over August for the summer holidays and we'll be back in September. Sam, did you want to? Well, no, I just wanted to say that we're also including some recipes, aren't we? With, yes. Uh, with this when it goes out. Um, and I think Rachel's doing a cook along. She's actually doing a bean burger as well. Yeah. Um, which will, yeah, which will be brilliant for picnics, um, cold for picnics or on the barbecue um, or even just to trick the kids. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so absolutely right, Sam. We've got the slideshow we'll have the recording and we'll also have some lovely recipes that you've put together for us so lots of information there that people can pardon the pun but digest in their own time and, and with that note I'm feeling very hungry after all this talk of paella and and such yeah. so thank you everybody and have a good evening and thanks again Sam for a great night thanks Sean thank you bye bye, -bye.